Welcome back to a new tutorial, Benoît Farine for Ben Explorer. In this module, we are going to talk further about preferences in Premiere. In the previous module, we went over the different preferences options. Preferences can be application specific and are global to any project. Preferences can be project specific and only apply to a project. And preferences can be sequence specific and define the editing settings of the media that we drop on a particular sequence. We will put this in practice. We will play with preferences settings. As we said earlier, there are so many options and we simply will not cover them all here, but there are a few we might benefit from right away. I have Premiere running already and I opened the project Preferences Practical Use from the Projects folder in the Tutorial Files on the desktop. Premiere might ask you to convert the project and might ask you to relocate the media. If you need help on that, follow my episode Get Ready with the Tutorial Files. I explain the reasons for Premiere to request the conversion and for relocating files. Let's go through some of the general preferences. Go to Edit and choose the Preferences option on Windows. On a Mac, go up to the Preference Pro menu and select the General Preferences options. And here, select the General category. From here, we can change the startup behavior. I prefer not to display the start screen. Instead, I prefer when Premiere opens the last project I worked on instead of showing the start screen. So I click here and I select Open Most Recent. From now on, when we open Premiere, the most recent project will open instead of the start screen. By the way, we could also change the Open Existing Project behavior. Currently, it will show the Open dialog. We could open the start screen instead, but I will keep the current behavior. Now let's look at the bins options. This is something we probably want to change. A bin is a folder that appears in the project panel and a bin can contain several media, similarly to a folder on your drive. Based on these settings, the current behavior when working with bins is as follows. When we double-click on a bin, the bin opens in a new tab. When we hold Ctrl and double-click on a bin, the bin opens within the current tab. When we hold Alt and double-click on the bin, the bin opens as a new floating window. I'd like to run these options with you. I'm using bins very frequently, so to define a proper behavior is a time saver. I select OK to close the Preferences dialog because I made changes to the startup behavior and I want to commit those changes. Let's look at bins. Hover over the Project panel and there I'll make sure that the panel is showing thumbnails so icon view should be selected. Now we see those bins here. Double click Video to open the video folder. Notice that the video bin was opened as a new panel. We have the project panel here and the video panel that we just opened by double clicking on the video bin. This reflects the behavior that we just saw in the preference dialog. Double click on a bin. The bin opens as a new tab. Now I'll go back to the project panel and I want to see what's inside the image bin. So I double click image and the image bin is opened as a new tab, the image panel. So far, we've added two panels to the stack. This can be helpful if I need to switch from a bin, say from images, to another bin, say to video, in order to go back and forth between those bins. But this can also make our group here overly busy as we are opening additional panels. Let's close these two bins then. We saw in a previous module how to close panels. I can either select the close panel from the menu here. So let's close this bin using close from your menu and that one using the shortcut key, Ctrl W or Command W. We just saw that when I double click on a folder, a new tab is opened. Let's try with Ctrl or Command and double click instead. When I hit Ctrl or Command, double click on the video bin, the bin opens within the current panel. That again was defined as is in the preference settings. 
And all I need to do to go back to the project panel is click this icon. This goes back up one level. And lastly, let's try with Alt key or the Option key on the back and double click. So I'll hit Alt or Option, double click on the video folder. The bin opens as a new floating panel. A floating panel isn't of much use here as it covers our real estate, but moving it to a second monitor can be actually very useful. I'll close that panel by clicking the X here. My personal preference is to open a bin within the current tab. To do that, I'd have to hit Ctrl or Command and then double click, but I tend to forget to hit Ctrl or Command before I double click on the folder, so I end up with an additional tab. This is where changing the preferences is useful. So I'll head back to Preferences, General, I'll change the defaults to what I want. When I double click on a bin, I want the bin to open within the panel. Let's change this then. When I hit Ctrl or Command double click a bin, I want it to open in a new panel. I do like the current way of opening a floating window when I hit Alt or Option, so I will keep the behavior as is. And finally, I'll click OK to commit the changes. Let's look at another set of preferences, the audio preferences. So let's go back to Edit, Preferences, or to the Premiere Pro menu and General Preferences on the Mac, and let's go into the Audio category. Oh, by the way, we can also select any Preferences category from here within the Preferences dialog. So I can go through Edit, Preferences, General, for example, and then just click Audio. Most of the time, I want to hear my audio while I'm scrubbing through the timeline. When I don't hear the audio while scrubbing, it can be very difficult to find the specific audio, such as dialogue or a specific noise or any other audio keys. But again, this is up to the way you want to work, so you can turn this off and audio will be off when scrubbing through your video. Let's look at the pitch option the pitch of your video is affected by the speed at which the audio is played. The faster it is played, the higher the pitch, and the inverse is true. With Maintain Pitch While Shuttling selected, the pitch won't be changed by the speed at which the audio is played. I like the current audio settings, so let's move to Labels. Here we can change both the color of a label and its name. Click on the color bar to open the color picker window. Here we can customize our label colors. Use the color picker to select the color you want. I'm fine with the current color, so I click Cancel. We can also name our labels, and we should try to keep logical names, so it's easy to recognize them under the Labels Defaults Preferences. Under Label Defaults Preferences, notice that Movie is Iris, Video is Violet, and so on. Try to remember that. Now close the Preferences dialog, and we go to the Project panel. This is where our videos and other media are listed. Switch from Thumbnail view to List view. Here on the left, notice that each type of media is represented by a specific color swatch. They correspond to the Label Defaults preferences that we saw in the Application Preferences. Remember? Video is violet, movie is iris. Those colors can be customized in the Labels Preferences. We look at another set of options in the Preferences. But before we open the Preferences dialog, I'd like to show you what we are about to look at in the Preferences. Go to the Timeline, and now set the playhead at about 5 seconds, right here, at this edit point. What we want to do is preview the video at this point and analyze the transition between this video and that one. So one option is to move the playhead a little earlier and hit play. The video plays, we run over the transition, now we hit stop, and perhaps we need to troubleshoot again. So we place the playhead here again, play, analyze, stop, and so on. This works obviously, but Premiere gives us a feature for that, and it's called Play Ahead. Play Ahead starts to play a few seconds before the playhead position, up to a few seconds after the playhead position. Let's try it. I place the playhead here, at the intersection of those clips, 
and now hit Shift and K. We jump back a few seconds, the video is playing, the video plays over the edit point and it stops a few seconds later. Notice that the playhead is set back to its original location. To run this again, all we need to do is run playhead again, hit Shift K and here we go again. We jump back a few seconds, this is referred as pre-roll and plays past the original playhead positions for a few seconds. This is called post-roll. We can customize the pre-roll and post-roll duration. So let's go back to preferences and we select playback. Pre-roll is set to 3 seconds, so playhead will jump back 3 seconds before the playhead position and post-roll is set to 2 seconds. These values work for me most of the time, but we may occasionally want to refine the pre-roll or post-roll numbers based on the transitions or the effect that we want to troubleshoot. Let's look at another useful tip. Close the Preferences dialog and activate the timeline. I'm just left-clicking on it and the blue highlight shows up, indicating it's activated. Now hold Shift and hit the right or the left arrow keys. The playhead either steps forward or steps back a certain number of frames. The number of frames is customizable. If we look at the number of frames in the playhead timecode and hit shift right a row, we can see that the number of frames was increased by 5. This is the current default. To change the default, go to Preferences, Playback. In Step Forward Back Many, the current number of frames is set to 5. I leave it to that number. Just remember that the steps are in frames, 5 frames currently, and not in seconds. Now let's jump to the timeline category. We'll discuss transitions later in this tutorial, but I'd like us to have a quick look over the transition durations. Transitions can be applied to both video and audio, and each have default durations. This means when you apply a transition, it will automatically be a specific length. You can customize the transition durations here. Notice that the duration is in either frames or seconds. We will cover transitions in a future episode, but this gives us a pointer if we eventually need to adjust the default transition duration. Below we see that still images have a default duration too. Again, we we'll look at using still images later in the tutorial, but basically this setting determines how long we want our still images to be when they are brought into the timeline. Again, this is a matter of preference. We increase or decrease the duration, but remember, this is just the default setting. We can still adjust our images as they have been dropped onto the timeline. There is one setting I'd like us to look at under this category. It is the snap playhead. First, close the preferences dialog. Notice this icon here. This is the timeline snap setting. When blue, it indicates it's turned on. Gray, the setting is off. So let's make sure it's on. Let's drag a new clip to the timeline. I'll grab a biker at the sea. And without releasing the mouse button, I'll move it toward the end of the last clip. Notice it snaps to the end of the previous clip. Let's release the mouse button and delete as we won't need the clip. Now move the playhead at the intersection of the two clips. This is interesting. The timeline snap is on, but the playhead doesn't snap to the edit point. Why is that? Well, that's because there is an additional setting for exactly that. Basically, when timeline snap is on, we can choose to not only snap clips within the timeline, but also whether or not to snap the playhead to edit points. That setting is off, that's why our playhead won't snap here. So let's open preferences again, and this time go to timeline. I'll tick the snap playhead in timeline when snap is enabled checkbox, and I'll click OK. Now when I'm scrubbing along the timeline, the playhead is snapping to edit points. And remember, this playhead snapping preference obeys the timeline snap S setting. If I turn off the timeline snap by hitting S, then the playhead won't snap to edit points. Since I use snapping often in my workflow, I make sure timeline snap is enabled. Let's look at one last preference. 
we will configure our autosave settings. Open the autosave category. Notice that the option to automatically save projects is selected. This is a good thing. If for any reason Premiere is crashing or we run into a power failure, we wouldn't want to lose all of our work. It is certainly a good habit to save often by either clicking Ctrl or Command S uh, or through the File Save menu, but frankly, I often just forget to do that. The defaults are set to save our project every 15 minutes up to a maximum of 20 versions. I prefer to set mine to save every 10 minutes and keep the maximum to 20 versions. This gives me more frequency and saves my work in increments back 3 hours and a half. Plus, project files are fairly small, so space should not be an issue. There are so many more preference settings that we haven't covered here, but hopefully the few ones we looked at shows you the benefits of tweaking those settings. Also, as you'll be working more with Premiere, you'll find value in coming back here and adjust settings so they work best for you. So far, so good, but we haven't played yet with media. And that's the whole purpose of using a non-linear video editing product, isn't it? In the next module, we'll look at importing media in our project.